Welcome back to Cleveland. It's good to be back. You have a lot of people who are happy to see you here. I want to say thank you for doing this because I know that um, our personal stories are vulnerable stories, but there's power in embracing vulnerability and in being able to control our own narrative and tell our own truth. Have you been wanting to tell your story in your own words? I think, yeah, ultimately there's, there's a perception, you know, of who a person is and there's a reality of it. In my position, most people only get to see one side of it, you know, and that's, it's unfortunate, but, um, you know, I, I have to use my platform in the, in the best possible way, um, in the most healthy way, I think, to convey um, what has transpired in my life and how it can affect and positively influence somebody else and help them down the road. Because I believe that's the platform which I've been given to do it and the experiences I've, I've gotten, I think, are more beneficial um, to other people to learn from more so than just to keep to myself or allow people to control the narrative and put out whatever they, they seem fit to put out about me. When we go through difficult times and we come out of it, or even when we're in it, we're always looking for the reason why. And it's usually when we come out of it that there's that aha, aha moment. And you go, oh, now I know why that happened. Now I know what I'm going to do with it. Has that moment happened for you, given all that you've been through? I believe it has. Yeah, most definitely. It gets things get originally. I think they're skewed. Things are blurred. Um, you know, focuses are redirected so many different times. You know, especially coming into any type of notoriety, prominence early in life at 20 years old, coming into the NFL. Now I think that that moment of clarity is uh, just a lot more profound, you know, the, what needs to be done, what I have to do, um, what is and what isn't worth risking, you know, towards your towards ensuring your future and your family's future and everybody that it, it can affect. And for me, I've had to find out just to how many people are affected by my actions. I love that you said you have a moment of clarity. I think that's so important in life when we go through a struggle and we want to come out a winner. Um, what was your moment of clarity like? And what was that message in your moment of clarity? I think, I think for me, it, it really came down to First off, looking introspectively, seeing what I've been through and seeing how it could possibly help. Like, that I've been put in this situation, dealt with what I've dealt with, for it to be a bigger purpose, to help a, to help a bigger, um, be a part of the solution as opposed to the problem and something outside of myself in a large, much larger scale, much larger picture. And that's when it initially, I think it initially kind of translated into something that seemed a little bit more clear of a purpose for something that I could look forward to do or look forward to put my energy and effort and mind uh, towards. And that's giving back, not only like in the community initially, but people I think, and young men especially, just um, that are coming out in, in sports and trying to find their way through high school, college, NFL, younger players that are trying to really learn how to navigate this whole, the whole nuance of being a student athlete or being an athlete, you know, um, and not getting lost in the shuffle because many of us really aren't that um, well guided when it comes to that point. And uh, you'll see instances in which how many times it happens over and over again. These guys keep running into issues, social issues or whatever, you know, outside the, the realm of football, come running into problems and nobody seems to really be able to, to help bring them along in the right way and give them some sound advice um, as opposed to 
as opposed to being, you know, just sounding like a lecture. Like, oh, yes. you need to be doing this, you need to be doing this. It's like, well... Because nobody you know, wants to be told, you should, you right, need, exactly. right? It's like, well, show me how to do it. Nobody's yeah. going to walk that walk with you. Nobody knows, you know, what you're really going through, um, in which I did, in the case, which I do. And uh, I think I, if I could be, you know, be that filter in a way to help prevent and be proactive in many of these young men's lives, young women's lives, and how to get ahead and give them at least an opportunity to start their career, to chase their dream in a constructive way, in a professional way, um, you know, in a relatable way, you know, I think right right, uh, right now more so than ever, it is, uh, I think, very a very crucial, integral part of the growth process that's been missing and been lacking, I think. Well, what it sounds like you're talking about is something that's bigger than football. Oh, yeah. Much, mm-hmm. much bigger than football. And I think that's that's what really came to mind. I think that moment of clarity was that it's, it's much larger than playing sports. Um, more than a more than just a day job or <clears throat> having people having expectations for you, um, you know, and it's it's about outside of the lines about your family, it's about characteristics, about things that can be applied to everyday use, and really just how to find some type of grounding in this, in this world in which you're not necessarily... It really isn't tailored. <laughs> it really isn't tailored for you too, too, too well. And how you can, um, how you can slip through those cracks are just, you know, it's so frequent. And um, having somebody there to try to help guide you around those, around those um, unsafe zones, I guess, so to speak. I think it could be done and managed a little bit better. And um, if I could have, to, if I could do anything to be a part of it, I think that's great. I watched your uninterrupted story, which was really incredible, and I give you so much uh, credit for speaking your truth and being honest about your struggles. Everyone loves a comeback story. I'm sure it's not lost on you that you and the Cleveland Browns are running this parallel comeback story, right? Right, very true, very true. Um, the timing of it, I guess, couldn't be any better. <laughs> but <laughs> it's 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 as it should be, I think. Um, I'm sure for the, the fans of, of uh, the Browns, they've been waiting a lot longer than I've even been around. Oh, trust you me, know? we have been. <laughs> so, Born and raised here. Right, <laughs> right. so, but, you know, I, I think... Everything happens for a reason, and you know I'm definitely very spiritual, and you know believe that things things are put into place, right in what they're supposed to be in people's lives for things to happen and come into fruition at the perfect moment. And me and being here as long as I've been in Cleveland, I've seen the ups and downs of it, and the ins and outs, and every side of it, um, top to bottom from the NFL standpoint, and. I can go as far to, as far as to say I've never seen uh, an organization have a turnaround that it's that it's been showing at, as of late, you know, for for us, and it's exciting. It's very exciting, and it's something. It's a it's a motivating factor. It's an external motivator for me as well to try to keep up with that pace. You know, yeah. it's um it's in good nature and it's in good spirit. And it's great, and I want to definitely be a part of that and um, it's contagious it really is Josh you're kind of like the prodigal son right you you went through a lot and the Cleveland Browns as an organization really have allowed you that breathing room to work on yourself to work through your struggles and seemingly are welcoming you back with open arms. And they're not your blood, right? No, right, not at all. Sometimes that's what <laughs> parents have to do right. when their child goes astray. But this is a business. Yeah. Um, is that surprising to you that such a big business has been so incredible that way toward you? It 
it was extremely surprising. I think even several years ago, I imagined myself being traded, cut, released a long time ago, honestly, um, on multiple occasions and wondered why it hasn't happened yet. It was very confusing. We went through several different regime changes in the front office. And I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with these people, <laughs> you know, yeah. with these people up here. I thought this is how this cutthroat business works, you know. Yeah. Um, and it was, and that's what I was expecting. And then when it didn't happen, and people were showing me uh, a certain amount of love and offering help, I didn't know how to accept that. And I was just expecting to kind of get pushed away, thrown away, you know, and deal with my situations on my own, because that's how it usually goes. And it took me a while to come to terms with that, that, you know what, these people might really have something to offer me. And they really are extending, you know, a branch to help me. And it's really up to me to grab onto it and take advantage of that help. Um, and it was much needed. And I was very grateful for the Haslam family coming in and, and showing that in them. What I want to do now more than ever is just reciprocate that to them and, you know, definitely show them how much I love and appreciate them and given as much resources as they have to not only me now, but the entire, the entire team, entire organization. The Cleveland Browns organization, to me, it's a family. And when I say when I come back here, it feels like coming back home because it's all I know. It's where I grew up and dealt with the hardships and, you know, best of best of my career best of my times worst of times you know I have my kids here um, some of my best friends are here it um, it's really shown itself to it's it's become a part of who I am you said something interesting and that was you almost expect that somebody would leave your side or turn their back on you when you're going through something difficult which the Browns organization did not do. That comes from, does that come from growing up? Were you used to people turning their back on you? I was, I was never used to anybody having my back in the first place or even like taking notice anyway, you know, so it was easy for me to just like dip out of a situation or, you know, find a way around it or, you know, burn a bridge very easily because I had no attachment to them whatsoever. Um, and so I, ex I didn't expect much from people, honestly. I didn't expect too much from myself. It made it, it made it easier for me to deal with whatever it was that I was dealing with. And I think it made it easier for them to, or people, to not expect me to be around too long. You know, it's like, oh, Josh was nice, he was a cool guy, I never got to really know him that well. But, you know, here today, going to my, tomorrow, out of sight, out of mind type of thing. You go on about your life. I go on about mine. No love is lost, so to speak. You know, wish each other the best. That's just kind of how life has gone. I've always had to look out for myself, you know, keep myself in mind first. And in a selfish way, I think um, that's what it really was. It was selfish. But I think instinctively for me growing up, it was just really, it was a survival instinct. You know, nobody's going to look out for you better than you're going to look out for yourself. So do what you have to do. Um, you know, trust people sparingly. And um, I'm glad that the Browns organization and the city of Cleveland showed me otherwise and allowed me room to grow and develop. Things just seem to be falling into place. The Browns draft Baker at number one. Mm -hmm. They sign Jarvis Landry. You're with the team. Um, during OTAs and practicing with the team. And then on July 23rd, you write a letter. And you said, I'm not going to be there at the beginning of training camp. Why did you pull yourself out? What was happening? Um, several things, I think, were happening, going on. Um, I think with me and my inner circle, where we stood at – um, with the team, contractually, you know, going into the next year, um, you know, for me, dealing with my family situation, my kids, my mother, my brothers, um, 
how you know how am I going to take care of these situations? Am I responsible to take care of this situation compared to whichever situation? Kind of being overwhelmed to a certain extent, in which I think I needed a break. Um, and the people around me voiced their opinions and gave me their recommendations. And from my experience, I learned it's best to go with those recommendations as opposed to uh, leaning on my own understanding. And and they played a great part, and it helps. And really, just leaning on people to uh, and asking for help, and knowing when to accept it, and knowing that you know these people will actually have my best interests in mind. I can trust that this time, you know. Yeah. And I think moving forward, I can continue to trust um, the people that direct me into the into the, the area in which they they think is best for me. They're professionals, they're caring people, they're loving people that have no nothing to gain from me, you know, um, anything other than my health, mental health, physical health, and want the best thing for me. But it wasn't about being, like, on the verge of a setback. I think anytime you feel overwhelmed to, to a sense in which um, you're not for sure what to do, it's, it's never a good place to be. Uh, especially anybody in my situation, my circumstance that has as much to lose as I do. Um, you want to insulate yourself as best possible. And I go to just about any length to do that, I think, you know, to ensure my recovery, sobriety, um, my livelihood, my family's well, well-being. Um, you know, a lot rides on the decisions I make, so... I have to keep all that in mind. I know fans will be like, well, what's wrong with him? What's he doing? Why isn't he showing up? We want you to play the dance. Like, I understand that. And I could, I'll probably be okay. I'll probably be fine. But is it worth the risk? You know? Is peace of mind, lack, you know, not having that peace of mind, is it worth the risk? Just, you know, seeing, uh, waking up today and just seeing how, how you're feeling. And um, for me, it wasn't, it wasn't worth that risk. I think I wanted a lot more clarity, a lot more introspection, a lot more, you know, just awareness of um, where I'm at today, how to deal with it properly, healthily, and how to move forward. That's huge. You have to recognize that's huge, given where you've come from, that now you have the recognition of when it's time to take a step back to put yourself first. I'm sure the old you would not have done that. No, not at all. Not at all. It's tough. It's very tough. Um, that decision was very hard, I think. I mean, you know, and um, I think with the amount of experience that I've gained from it and the positive effects that I've that I've that I know I've felt, um, and the tools in which I've learned, um, I think you know once you learn them, you can unlearn them. For me, you know, it's 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 at the point that you have to. You want to take a step back, take a pause, you know, kind of take your hands off the wheel, so to speak. Yeah, right? <laughs> you know, uh-huh. Of, of red light. Jesus, take the wheel. Exactly. <laughs> Carrie exactly. Underwood knew what she was exactly. singing about. Exactly. Um, you, know? you know, it's interesting because everybody has an opinion. Right. And there are always going to be people who have an opinion about addiction. Mm-hmm. Often those who don't know anything about it. And maybe you don't even care or have the desire to learn anything about it. Um, I'm sure there was a point in time when you would have cared what everybody thought. Are you in a place now where you don't care what other people think or are you still working on it? To say I don't care what other people think is a lie. You know, it's just like you're full of, you know, you're, you're, you're BSing. Um, yeah, <laughs> if for that's sure. the case, yeah. to a certain extent, though, um, in which it becomes unhealthy, yeah, I don't get to that point anymore. I think you know, it's to the point in which um, I want to be seen as a role model. I want to be seen, you know, doing the right things. And to that regard, yeah, I care what my daughter thinks and my son thinks. Of me. You know, um, I care about being a good son. And th- those are things in <laughs> which that are beneficial to you in your everyday life, those things, yeah, you need to care about what other people think, you know, it's going to, they're going to influence your behavior, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. so you definitely should care what uh, people think, but 
um, never to the extent in which that it caused you harm or caused you undue stress in which you know you don't need that in your life whatsoever and more more so than anything those those are probably not the people that you need around you or involved in your social circle there are facts and there's fiction and there's a whole lot of gossip and storytelling in between um, there are some people who have said that you didn't really want to be around HBO's Hard Knocks. Is that true or not true? Yeah, I heard that. It's crazy. A bunch of rumors <laughs> came out about why he didn't do this, why he did this, whatever. No, I don't mind cameras, obviously. You know, or interviews. Um, you just gotta be um, definitely real selective. But HBO, I had no issue with that at all. I was looking forward to, <laughs> to getting on HBO Hard Knocks. Like, every kid grew up, I mean, at least football kids, you know, grew up watching the Hard Knocks, HBO, many other just sports fans in general. So, like, that was something I wanted to desperately be a part of <laughs> was Hard Knocks. So I was looking forward to that. Where that came from, I don't know. But, no, being on camera, it didn't, wouldn't cause me any stress or anything like that. No, not at all. So I don't know where it came from. But as you can see, people can, the perception, mm -hmm. you know, can be skewed and portrayed. And people think it's a good enough sale that becomes their reality so without me doing this with you that story carries on forever you love hard knocks you grew up watching it you yeah. liked it and you were looking forward to being a yeah, part of it i watch it every tuesday <laughs> with my family we look forward to it my girlfriend her family watches it like we have a good time with it it's awesome it's, it's so good, story. isn't it? It is a, it is a great storyline. <laughs> what I've loved about it is that I've been able to get to know players who I didn't know anything about. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Same. I swear. I swear, yes. Yeah, and yeah. it makes you feel kind of attached to some of them Very too, right? Yeah, you could hear it in the stands just last week in Detroit. Players are like, are they chanting for broken right now <laughs> <laughs> I, like, yeah. right they've got an attachment to like Devin Kajus they're like you know it's it's a great underdog story not only the free agent players but the team as a whole um and when you get to see it from you know that that type of insight it it shows the humanity in players you know having that given opportunity to be on camera to interact you know underneath the mask behind your you know helmet um it's relatable I don't know if you watched the Cavs championship parade back in 2016. It mm -hmm. was crazy. It was insane. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, Cleveland is a football town. So I think about if that happened with the Browns, it would be, I yeah. mean, I can't even <laughs> say how much bigger it would be. Yeah. Does the thought of that excite you when you saw Cleveland's reaction to the Cavs, knowing how much they love football here? Initially, I think I was in denial about it for a while. I was like, wow, it's a lot of people. A million people came out. That's huge. You know, it's the first championship this, you know, the city's had in over 50 years. Then I had to think about it, and I was like, if the Browns went to the Super Bowl and won, I was like, you're not talking about a million plus people in the city of Cleveland. I'm like, you're talking about hundreds of millions of people across the world <laughs> that be rooting for this organization that been deemed as, you know, less than band of misfits, whatever you want to call them, bad news bears, so to speak, underdog story to play itself out with this, you know, Cinderella style ending. It could bring people together in a major way that surpasses, like, the platform of the National Football League. But that's the level in which I think that um, this organization in this city, this state, um, holds value in, in, in the life uh, of people. And um, it could mean a lot, and I think it does mean a lot, and I'm... I'm beyond excited to really just play this thing out and see how the story ends. Well, I think people who watch you, they know that you're, like, sick talented. 
it's this God-given gift that you have. Like, you're like Usain Bolt fast, right? Like, you go past him and you're like, uh-huh, yeah, where you at? Where you at? <laughs> uh, so, to have that kind of gift, you don't want it to go to waste. No, definitely not. Now, in Cleveland, there was a huge banner of LeBron James that hung. And it's come down. That could be you. That is something that you could bring to the city. Like, you have that LeBron James kind of talent when you're focused and you're out there and you're doing your thing and you're in this healthy place right now. Does the thought of that seem exciting to you? Does that feel like it could be pressure to you to deliver to a city? Um, is it overwhelming? What kind of emotion does that thought bring you? It's, I think more than anything, it's, it would be very humbling, honestly. Uh, um, but to me, it just displays, when I, if I looked at something like that, I see perseverance. I see a resilient story. Um, I see people that share that. Uh, more so than just looking at myself, I see many other people that struggle in life or something like, you know, for whatever reason, uh, circumstances that they've overcome or come from in life, how they could also possibly, you know, attain this level of greatness or whatever you know want to call it. Um, whether you're highly skilled or not, you know, whichever field that you might be in. Um, for me, that's that's what it means. It mean it mean showing other people that there's hope. You know, um, I've, I've never been the golden child. I'm not. You know, was never raised with a silver spoon in my mouth. Any type of any type of way. Play for organizations that seem at the bottom of the barrel like that's my storyline all the way through and through like for me I feel as though I'm a man of the people and I'm for the people in every type of way um, you know I'm not trying to come in and I don't want to be anybody's king <laughs> I love LeBron James you know he's my favorite basketball player but that's not my that's not my motive um, so when I see that I see I see people's faces you know um, that that image and it doesn't so it's not something I'm fearful of or something I think I couldn't handle. I think it's something that's needed. Um, it's something that I would love to happen um, just to give people hope, you know, give hope to the hopeless. And I think so many people are in need of that and so many people are kind of just blind to it that they really don't even see it until it's right in front of their face. Do you believe in second chances? Um, I, I'm a firm believer in second, third, fourth, fifth, <laughs> sixth chances. I think, you know, there's the numbers in which we put on them, I think are there kind of just held to societal standards. But um, without a certain amount, without any amount of failures in life, experiences in life, never we, we would never as a people as a collective we would have never gotten to where we are today in this century doing anything that we love to do today without an extreme amount of failure and, you know whether that's personally trying to become the best person that you could possibly become that's going to come with a lot of trial and error and that's going to that's an ongoing process that is never ending what do you want to do with your second ch chance or third or fourth or fifth um, you have to be able to just look at the grand scheme of things, the entire picture, see where you've messed up or see what missing piece was there um, previously that you could either feel, take away, add to it, you know, cover it up or whatever you need to do in order to create something bigger, better, you know, something more functional than what you had streamline it, you know, bigger or smaller, it just has to work, and you 
you have to keep trying. Like for me, there's no quitting me, no matter what. Um, many people expected me to quit many different occasions. I, I almost, you know, thought of it myself, and I just couldn't come to terms with it. It's just not a part of my chemical makeup. I just can't do it. I can't quit. Um, for some people, it's easier than others. And it is easier said than done. It's a it's a painful reality when you have to stare rejection or failure in the face and still be able to care about yourself enough to want something better for yourself. What was your rock bottom? Everybody has a different rock bottom. You know what? Rock bottom, I was told is an illusion. <laughs> hmm. It really is. Um, your rock bottom is wherever you stop digging at. You know, um, but there is no bottom. If you want to keep going to see as far as you can go, the only way to find it is, you know, in a casket. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? And you Honestly, didn't want that you for know, yourself. You know, you know, I didn't want that for myself. You were open in your video on Uninterrupted that your substances of choice were pretty much everything. So your addiction kind of ran the gamut. Um, What did you say in your mind in the moment when you said, I have to stop because fill in the blank? So, at that point in time, I had to stop because I wanted to be a father. I wanted to be a father. I had um, just had my my daughter um, not too long before, and I had to come to terms with leaving a family behind um, and put somebody not somebody but my own flesh and blood in the predicament in which I was raised without a father you know without a whole family without a loving and caring environment and um, I saw myself at a very young age and it you know and it scared the hell out of me I was like, no, no way. <laughs> like, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, you know. Um, and if I'm the person that has to be the one to pull myself up, because that's what it was going to take, there was nobody else that was going to do it for me. I had to do it for myself and know it was going to be for a bigger reason other than myself. And um, that was, the, I think, the initial, the initial point in which I um, wanted to start changing my life. Um, changing uh, who I was for the better. Do you work a 12-step program? Mm -hmm. I think every human being should work a 12-step program. (laughs) It's really a beautiful thing, right? (laughs) When you go into those rooms and Mm -hmm. you look at it, um, on the looking at your old self and the outside looking in type of thing, it's like, these are pretty much guidelines just to live life by. Like, this is like some golden rule type of stuff yes. that they should probably teach in high school. Yes, <laughs> I agree. And it, it, it makes great sense, and it's given me um, insight, you know, to likes which I never thought I'd be able to see before. Like, be able to see, like, in people and um, in myself. It's um, It's been a huge huge benefit and I'm really grateful to have an opportunity to be introduced to recovery in the program with the help of the NFL, NFLPA, the Haslums, and and myself, and myself really just kind of being open to it and um, giving it a try because anything, everything else I've tried has just hadn't worked. So I'm taking the recommendations, doing what I'm supposed to do, and uh, it's been paying off. You did the work, though. You oh, did no, all definitely. the hard work. <laughs> it is a lot of work. It is definitely a lot of work. Nobody said it was going to be easy. <laughs> that is that is the tough part about it. It's not easy, but nothing in life worth having is. So. And you literally take one day at a time. Yeah, that's it. That's why I don't necessarily like giving answers to the media and stuff about 
what about this point in time during this year several weeks from now I was like I really don't know I couldn't tell you <laughs> that makes <I> <laughs> total sense now when you put it that way <laughs> when you are asked about the future yeah. you're like it's just Sunday right. I'm trying to get through the end of the day before I get to Monday yeah, I yeah. try to bring it I try to bring it everything back to what I've learned and people probably see it and hear it and be like what is this guy talking about you know because <laughs> yeah. it's just not you know it's not really ingrained into too many people's thinking patterns but for me that's the most beneficial you can't get too far ahead of yourself you stay in the day stay present enjoy being where you are today in this moment and there's no need to dwell or ruminate on what's to come and what's to happen you got you got no control over what happens from here till I get back to the house you know so being here in the car this is where I'm at this is where I can interact this is where I need to be focused at right now and it takes a huge load off your brain. <laughs> so, What emotion best describes where you are in life right now? Serene. Serene. It's, um, it's, it's serenity right now. And I take an extreme amount of joy in that. And the peace of mind that comes with that, it's invaluable. Um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I really wouldn't. There's, there's no price tag you can put on peace of mind. I have to ask you this before we go, because there will be people who will watch this mm -hmm. and who right now are where you used to be. Mm -hmm. They're struggling. And I think when you're struggling, you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You can't even imagine that it's ever going to be better. Mm -hmm. What can you say to those people right now? to get them through you know what I think would help me the most that's a that's where I could really come from and um, I struggle with a lot of a lot of the shame and guilt that I've gone through in my life and you know past trauma and everything that I've dealt with it had it started with it started with forgiveness um, I had to forgive myself as hard as that was. I thought I didn't have any toxicity towards that, um, but that was probably the the main key ingredient to my redemption, salvation, whatever you want to call it, peace of mind, was letting go of that shame that I felt for, you know, causing all of this trouble or, you know, having these bad things happen in my life or seeing myself in a certain light or thinking that people are right about me, you know, I had to find a way in my heart to let room um, for love to come in. Uh, I had to start loving myself. You actually probably heard that in the Hard Knocks situation. If there's anything I could tell somebody, it would, it would be to love yourself. Um, but that couldn't happen until I first forgave myself. Um, and there's many things. It's not easy. You know, you're not going to forgive yourself all at once. It takes time. But, you know, one after another, you have to slowly but surely allow yourself to love yourself and um, know that you're worth it more than anything. That you're worth being loved, that you should... Um, allow people to care for you, allow people to look out for you, allow people to help you, you know, but more importantly, help yourself, love yourself, you know, uh, enjoy the day, just enjoy the day in, in the healthiest way possible. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. I mm -hmm. appreciate it. Thanks for the vibe. <laughs>